This is the Appaloosa Podcast, episode number 32. This episode, we're going to talk about the National Championship Endurance Ride, ANSWER, and the National Championship Competitive Trail Ride, ANCCTR. Welcome to Appaloosa, More Than Just a Color Breed, a podcast dedicated to showing the world the versatility and adaptability of the Appaloosa horse as well as the people devoted to preserving and enhancing this outstanding breed. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining me at the only podcast that talks about the Appaloosa horse and the people that own them, wherever that might take us. I actually had somebody the other day ask me, Tony, what does that mean, wherever that might take us? Well, to answer that question, this show is not about just showing or breeding or whatever. It's about the Appaloosa horse. Wherever an Appaloosa horse might be, and somebody that owns that horse is where we're going to try to be. Whether that's showing, whether that's breeding, whatever. If there's an Appaloosa horse involved, we're going to try to cover it. And I know that here lately, I've been kind of blathering on for like the last two, three, four episodes about committee meetings and board of directors meetings and all that. But the reason I did that is because I wanted to let you guys know what was going on within the Appaloosa Horse Club. Best way to do that is look at the minutes and see what they're talking about. Well, that's not what this episode is going to be about. For you listening to me blather on for so long, I have a treat for you. I actually have three interviews in this episode. And then at the end of the episode, I have a little bonus for you. Kim Rumsa and I started talking about the Chief Joseph Trail Ride and her experience. So I kind of added that on to the end, like I said, as kind of a bonus. So anyhow, what are we going to be talking about this week? This week, we're going to talk about the 2019 Appaloosa National Championship Endurance Ride, ANSWER, and the Appaloosa National Championship Competitive Trail Ride, ANCCTR. The 2019 Appaloosa National Championship Endurance Ride, ANSWER, was held in conjunction with the Arabian Horse Association Distance Nationals in Venita, Oklahoma on October 25, 2019 at the Al Hoot Spook Ride. The ride is located at the Franks Ranch and is an AERC sanctioned 50 mile ride. Answer has been held in locations across the country from Maine to California. The Arabian Horse Association and the Appaloosa Horse Club partnered for the fourth year to hold a multi-breed National Endurance Championship ride. Registered Appaloosas that are also registered with AHA as half Arabian may enter both national championships. The first annual Appaloosa National Championship competitive trail ride was held in conjunction with the AHA CTR National Championship ride on Saturday, October 26, 2019, also at the Franks Ranch. This is a 40-mile CTR and followed the AHA CTR rules. So instead of me continuing to blather on, let's go ahead and get into the interview. Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. So you guys had a big event this last weekend over here in Veneta, Oklahoma. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Well, it was the... uh... National um, uh, to the AHA and the Appaloosa National Distance Championship uh, for the 50 mile, and they also had the uh, Arabian 100 mile, which the Appaloosas didn't compete in. But um, so we had the uh, Appaloosas, the Arabians, I believe we had the Standard Breads, the Morgans, the Shy Guys, and I think two more breeds that were um, invited to compete in the National uh, Breed Championship. So that's what we were up there doing, and unfortunately, it poured on us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of it being pouring down because I was dealing with that. I'm about, like I said, 45 miles away from Vanita. So, yeah, we were getting, I think we probably got it worse than Vanita did, but I don't know. So the 100 miler, are you guys not allowed to participate in it or does just no one want oh, to? We can participate? compete in it, Okay, but it's not for the Appaloosa National. Um, the, the Appaloosa, the, um, the National for it is a 50 miler. Um, and uh, a lot of people, such as myself, would love for it to be a hundred miler, but we have enough problem getting people to compete in the 50 miler. So to try to get Appaloosa to compete in the hundred miler would be next to impossible. So they don't offer that, um, understandably, because there's not really enough of us to, to warrant it. But 
since I ride a half Arab, um, I could have competed in the 100 mile, but I chose to compete in the 50 mile Appaloosa uh, championship instead. Okay. And so how did that championship play out for you? Well, <laughs> it was a rough start. I mean, the night before we uh, got there, I mean, it was pouring. We had a vet in the pouring rain. And Cody, being from, you know, Louisiana, he doesn't have a lot of coat yet. And he was shivering cold uh, the night before. So I made a decision to actually load him in my trailer, and it's a two-horse slant load, and leave him in the trailer all night with food and water and everything, which I don't like doing because they don't get to move around. But I had to keep him warm. Um, if he'd stood there shivering all night long, it just it would not have worked. Um, you know, he would have been tired by the time morning rolled around. So I put him in the trailer, uh, woke up the next morning to pouring rain, uh, didn't feel well at all. I, uh, for some reason, was uh, sick at my stomach, just didn't feel good at all. Um, Cody hadn't drank any water that night. He hadn't eaten. Um, I gave him his breakfast that morning. He didn't eat his breakfast. So I was very, very close to not even starting the ride. I was uh, worried about him, not feeling good on top of it. But finally, about 30 minutes before the ride, I, I told myself, you know, we're endurance riders. We endure. So um, I'm not going to wimp out. So I went ahead and saddled him up, and um, we started out. And, of course, it rained most of the first loop, um, and it, it slacked off and uh, got a little bit better as the day went by. But that's how our ride started out anyways. Yeah, you guys did, what, uh, two 20-mile loops and then a little bit of an add-on there at the end? Yes. Uh, they had to move it to the road, of course, because it was so soggy. I mean, they were pulling it. Uh, for our trailers, they were pulling us in and out of the the actual uh, parking lot. Um, so we had a 20.5 uh, first mile loop, which we pretty much went out 10 miles and came back. And then we had a um, we did that twice. And then the third loop was a uh, 10.5 or something like that mi uh, mile loop, which so we went out 4.5 miles and then came back. Uh, I think it was 4.5 miles. And so it was mostly on road, which is a little concerning because. Um, you know, after all the soft ground and everything we've had, I was a little worried about Cody either getting a rock bruise or, or um, you know, his legs just taking a pounding on that gravel road that we were on. But thankfully, he held up. He, he, did, he did really well on it. He, he, even the next day after the ride, his legs looked really great. So I was, I was happy with that. Yeah, we were talking, I think, the day or two before the ride, and you are saying in the cold weather, Cody has a tendency to be a little fresh. Oh, yeah. And you were a little worried about <laughs> staying on that first five miles. But I guess that worked out, huh? Yeah, he was pretty much – he doesn't like rain in his ears, and it was raining. So his concern for the first <laughs> entire loop just about was keeping rain out of his ears. He didn't even think about bucking. So <laughs> that actually worked out in our advantage for that. And, of course, I was feeling rather puny, so my – I, even even though he wasn't bucking, my my goal for the first little bit was just to stay on him, stay stay upright, keep my horse fork, fork side down. So, yeah, so we did really well there. Okay, so how did all this turn out for you guys? Um, well, we started out with the leaders. We were um, we started out with the top five. My goal was just to to ride our own ride. You know, we didn't have any um, you know, we wanted to go, to go to win, but you know, I didn't want to risk my course or anything like that. So we started out with the top five to see what we do. Um, and for the first 10 miles, we stayed with the front runners. Um, we averaged somewhere around 15, 18 miles an hour, which is a lot faster than I like averaging. Um, I don't like going more than about 12 miles an hour, honestly, but it was the national championship. So um, I was going along with the flow for about 10 and a half miles. And then um, I finally shut Cody down. I was like, we can't go that fast that long. I didn't want to risk hurting him on those, those roads and everything, that pounding. So I shut him down, rode with a guy named AJ from Washington State for the, the next um, 10 miles. And came into the vet check, and, um, you know, I let the front runners go. There was, there was two of them. They were um, going pretty fast, so we just let them go. Didn't worry about them. When we came into the vet check, uh, went to the vet, and they were like, oh, first rider's in. I'm like, wait a minute. Um, we weren't in first. Where would be two go that were in front of us? And come to find out, they'd taken a wrong turn and actually ended up getting behind us. So I was actually in first at that point by, I think, about 20 minutes or so. So then my decision was... Do I slow down and wait for him to catch me, or do I try to hold the lead? Cody doesn't really do good uh, on the road by himself, um, but we had a, a bit of an advantage because the LDs were now doing the 20.5-mile um, the mile loop as well, and Cody would see them, and um, he'd pick up the speed trying to catch them, and we'd catch them, and he'd see more ahead of him. So he stayed focused, which was good. So we went ahead and tried to keep our lead. So for the second loop, uh, we did – Pretty well. Uh, we came in um, the second loop still in first place, and I think we had a 13-minute lead at that point. Um, and we vetted through fine. Cody was looking great. I was a little bit worried about 
uh, Cody, because um, I never really run him that fast for that long. But Gail Conway was a vet there, and Gail Conway's been vetting us since we started in 2012. And so I asked Gail if Cody looked any different than before, and he said, no, Cody looked great, gave us all A's, said, you know, didn't have any worries. So I was like, okay, we're going to go out for this last 10-mile loop, and we're going to try and hold our lead. And um, we did. We we held it. We uh, came into the finish with an 11-minute lead and managed to, to win the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, I told Cody about four miles out uh, that it was for, this was for all the marbles, so give me everything he had. So um, he did. We did excellent. He came in. Um, he had a CRI, an amazing CRI of 4440. Um, and then uh, we stood for best condition an hour later. And uh, his pulse, I think, when we stood for best condition was 12 or 11. Um, it was really excellent. He had A's on everything. So, I mean, and then, of course, it's the, and not only ended up winning the first place for the Appaloosa for the half Arab and for the entire ride, we also won best condition for the Appaloosa for the half Arab and for the whole ride as well. So that was, we just swept it. It wasn't anything more we could win. So now you guys were riding, when you say you took everything, you're talking Appaloosas, half Appaloosas, half Arabs, and full blood Arabs also? Yes. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we had um, uh, half Appaloosa, half Arab, I mean, um, half Arab and Appaloosa took first and second, and a shag I took third. I believe, the, if I'm not mistaken, the fourth place was the actual full Arab uh, that came in. So, yeah, we, we beat every breed that was out there, um, every breed that was competing. I believe they had some Passos as well that were competing. Um, so, yeah, we beat everything. <laughs> it, it was a surprise to me, but it, it happened. So, Well, that's a good kudos, not only for you and Cody, but for the Appaloosa breed as a whole. Yeah to actually come in and take that whole thing. Yeah, well, I mean, we dominated. I mean, Julie Fig was in second behind me on her uh, Appaloosa, or not hers, uh, it belonged to Jeff Hartman. Uh, but uh, the, of the, we had three uh, Appaloosa slash half Arab start. And um, of the three, Jeff Hartman got pulled, I think, bruised foot. And then um, Julie came in right behind us. So technically the Appaloosa is dominated by coming in first and second, and then everybody else was behind us. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I saw that, what is it, the Al- Alteques? Is that how you pronounce I it? I believe I'm so. Right. I'm not, I'm not sure on that one either, but I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, did any of those compete at all? Um, I that you don't aware? think so. I don't think they had any Morgans, and I don't think they had any of those. Um, I know they had the Shag Guys, the Appaloosas, the Half Arabs, Full Arabs. Um, let's see what else they had. They had something else. Uh, the Passos. I don't remember if it was the Pasifino, I believe is what they were. Um, and then. And they may have Tennessee Walker. I'm not sure. Right, uh, right. That might have been the others. That might be kind of funny to see a Paso going by doing distance cause, because of their gait and all that. I never really thought of them as a distance horse, but I don't know. I guess, you know yeah, they're good distance horses, <laughs> but I mean, to watch those little feet just go, dee, 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 yeah. they do their, <laughs> it's just so funny to watch them. But uh, yeah, they're good distance horses. Yeah, I saw an article here recently about the Altecas, about how there's certain people trying to bring them back in saying that they believe that they were the original Appaloosas and trying to kind of get back to that and all that. So I was just kind of curious as how they did. Um, that, that's the only thing I've ever really heard about them is that one article that I read. So, you know, I was just yeah. kind of curious, as, like I said, how they were doing, but yeah, that's pretty cool that you guys got out there and yeah, I know the weather was not uh, the most conducive. And I, I was talking to Lucy Friday morning, and she said you look pretty bad. She said you look <laughs> kind of bad Friday night too. She goes, but after that first twenty lo- twenty mile loop, she's like, you came back in and you look fine, and Cody looked fine. She goes, I guess they worked it out. <laughs> yeah, the fresh air helped a lot. I don't even know why I was sick like that, but uh, the fresh air coming at me after the first five or six miles, I felt pretty puny, and then uh, it just kept getting better and better. So now I wasn't able to eat anything until the third loop, so I was a little worried about that. Um, cause we we're putting out, putting a lot of energy and nothing going in. Um, but, uh, finished fine. And then about an hour after the ride finished, I was ready to eat a horse. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it worked out pretty good. So, you know, just got to go with the flow sometimes, but it is endurance, right? And there, there's a reason why they call it uh, endurance. I mean, we have to endure a lot of things. So not only the rain this time, but you know, a little bit of queasiness to top it off. So just goes to the territory. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I, I, well, I was out dealing with it, too. I was going to try to come up there and see you guys, but uh, 
I was dealing with all that rain we had here too. So yeah, I know what it's like to get out there in that cold and it's just like, man, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I am definitely not a cold weather person. Yeah. Especially when it's cold and rainy. And it's, it, it's okay when it's just cold and dry, but cold and rainy, even if you wear the best rain gear there is, you, you're going into the rain and the rain, I kind of like Cody doesn't like his ears wet. You know, he, he was more worried about keeping the uh, rain out of his ears. I was trying to keep the rain off me, but when you're going into it, it's just going straight down your collar and right. all the way down. So, yeah, <laughs> not much you can do. That's funny. He doesn't like rain in his ears. That's kind of an odd quirk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't blame him. I mean, even though the tried out, it was still ran at the tried out, and he tried it with his head sideways, so he tried to keep his ears dry. That's funny. That's funny. So. All right. Well, I think that's about all I could think of. Um, was there anything that you wanted to cover? I know you, all right, well, let me back up. So we had three people total for the championship, and you said one of them got pulled because of stone bruise or something like that. So it was you and Julie Fig yes. for one and two. And then right. the next day was the first annual CTR championship for the Appaloosas, yeah. And um, I believe uh, Kim Rumsa placed first, and Julie Fig was second in that one. Okay, I didn't realize Julie was in that one. I knew she was in the one with you. But now you stayed in road Saturday too for what was that for? No, I did, I was going to ride Sunday, um, okay. but I chose not to with with the the pounding roads and everything on his legs. I didn't want to take any chance. So we were done after Friday, but I did stay and volunteer on Saturday to try and, you know, help out with the, um, what they needed. So, um, I, I did stay and just volunteer, but I didn't ride. Yeah. I, I meant Sunday, but, um, uh, cause you said something about staying and riding somebody else's horse. Something like oh, that. No, I was going to ride Cody again. Uh, I was going to ride Cody again at 50 on Sunday, but it was just, yeah, the conditions were too bad, and like I said, he had too much concussion on those roads on Friday, so I wasn't going to risk my boy. He's, he's he's too precious, so. All right. So is this your first championship? No, this is our third. Your third one? This is, this is yeah, we won in 20, oh, goodness, we, let's see, we won in 2017, I believe. No. Yeah, 2016. Uh, I've got it mixed up. This is our third for the Appaloosa. This is, however, our first time we've ever won the championship for the half Arab. Um, we came in reserve champion last year. Um, so I believe we won it. Appaloosa was 2016, 2018, now 2019. So this is our third year in the road, road to win the uh, answer national championship. Okay. Now, did you guys actually, I saw online that one of the races had a little bit of money attached to it. Was that this one or is that the other one? Uh, that's the AHA sweepstakes. Um, I don't really understand all of that. I know you have to have a horse nominated for it. Um, of course, Cody's not nominated. He, you know, he's, I, I don't even know how you nominate him for it, but I'm not really interested in the money for it because I believe if my honest opinion is we don't need to have money in sports, you know, all this problem we're having with, um, all these multimillionaire people, if you're going to play and have a sport or, you know, such an endurance riding or whatever it is, and you put money in it, it just, it, it earns it. Um, so I don't like seeing money in our sport. Um, I would rather go for a t-shirt and the love of the sport and, you know, keep the money out of it. That's just my opinion though. <laughs> okay. Okay. I hear you. But yeah, the AHA did have some kind of money attached to it, but he had to, had to be nominated, but it had something to do with the AHA sweepstakes. So, um, I don't know anything more than that on that. Okay. Like I said, I just saw it online, so I didn't know a whole lot about it. And so I decided to ask, but all right, well, I think that's it. Unless there's something more you want to add. Not really. I don't, I think it pretty much told you everything. So, um, it, it, I'm, I'm glad the, um, uh, thank, thank everybody that sponsored the uh, Appaloosa and the uh, uh, Arabian association for letting us compete together. Um, I like, really like doing that, especially with a half era, but you know, help being able to compete in two championships in one ride. is really cool. And, um, appreciate the, uh, Franks as well. Um, uh, being so gracious with their ranch and, and all the changes they had to do the last, all right, you have a good day. Just spectacular getting all the trails moved over to the roads and, and just everything they did. So I want to put a, a shout out to them. Um, if you ever get a chance to ride with uh, Elena and, and Gunner um, on their ranch, it's, it's really awesome. You should go. So what's next for you guys? What's next coming up? Um, don't really know at this point. Um, we may be done for the season, start out a little something early next year. We may do season finale in Oklahoma later this month. I don't know. I've got my, my ride, Tracy Trails, coming up here in, a, in a, less than eight days. So right now, I'm my 
pure focus is on getting this ride together, getting the trails done, having a good ride. And then after this ride is over, then I'll stop and think about what's coming next. But for right now, um, just, you know, take it easy, maybe a ride or two, nothing major until early next year with Cody. So. Okay. So to kind of go back to what you're saying, you're, you're the coordinator for a ride coming up. Yes. I'm the ride manager for Trace the Trails in Athens, Texas, November 9th and 10th. So, um, uh, right now I'm actually headed that way to, uh, clear some trail. We've got a lot of it done. We've got a lot of the trails marked, but we've got a bunch of head knockers we're going to take out today, taking our clippers. So I've got my horse. We're going to, so we're going to trim everything that might slap you in the face or you might hit, uh, hit you in the head if you're on a tall horse. So we're going to take uh, a bunch of those out, make it look, the trails a little bit cleaner today. Now, is that a, a distance ride also? Yes, it's been on by the uh, AERC. <clears throat> <And, clears throat> excuse me, lose my voice. It's, uh, we'll have a 25-mile, we'll have a 50-mile, we have a 30-mile elevator on Saturday, and we're also going to be combining with the Ride and Tie Association, so we're going to have a ride and tie and an equathon um, as well this uh, next weekend, too. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we get this out soon enough where we might push some people y'all's way. Okay. Well, we appreciate anybody who wants to come. It's, it's a pretty nice trail. It's very windy. It's got a little bit of sand. Um, a lot of people like saying it's an easy trail, but I don't think so. Um, it's, it's got it's more technical than you think it is, um, even though it's flat. Mostly, we do have a little bit of rolling hills in there. It it can be pretty technical because of all the weaving in and out of the trees and everything. So, but it's a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. As always, it was a pleasure talking to you. Same here. Bye. Hey, Kim. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Tony. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, you guys were up in Venita, Oklahoma, last weekend. So how did that go? It was definitely um, looking like it was going to be raining for us. We got we were really fortunate it did not rain on us as much on Saturday as it rained on everybody else on Friday. It was it, they had to move all the trails onto the or change the trail to the road because of the sloppiness of the trails. Yeah, I know here at the house it was pretty sloppy. It's still pretty sloppy because even after you guys left, it continued to rain. So. I can imagine oh, no. how the trails would have been. Um, so they moved it up on like a gravel road, right? Or semi gravel road. I think from the pictures I saw that it wasn't all that much gravel. It's definitely yeah, crushed rock, gravel road, yes. Uh, there was only a small portion of it and I, I, I have to guess it was probably about three miles, well six miles total maybe, of um, you know, uh different it was a uh, private property and there was our roads that we were on too you know, a little different texture okay so i know with the other ride they did two 20 mile loops and a little extra there on the end how did they set up the ride for you guys uh the same we did the uh loops and they cut out a section of that extra for the miles um because it was so sloppy they didn't want us to um get bogged down in it and uh, get the horses hurt. And they added for the, so for us, we just had to do the 40 miles. Um, but for the people who were doing 50 mile rides, had to do another extra loop on the roadway somewhere else. Okay. So now this was, what was this ride? This was the Appaloosa National Championship Competitive Trail Ride. All right, so what is the difference between the answer and the competitive trail ride that you guys did? So with the answer ride, that was an endurance race. And uh, the name of the game is more just to come in first and then your horse pulse down and meet the criteria so you can get checked to get checked in and finalized. Where um, the competitive trail ride is they have a, a distance and a given speed average, and um, they add they add the times that you have to be you know mandatory excuse me mandatory holds, and they add all that time together, and then you have an optimum time. So you you have a time that you're checked out, and then a time that your your optimum time that you would come in, and you would get like in our case, we we left at seven fifty one and came in our optimum time in was. 406 
and we had 15 minutes on either side of that 406 time to come in where we were not penalized. So you could go as fast as you want, but you still have to come in, you know, to the checkpoint within that time frame. Or you can be disqualified if you're outside those uh, 15-minute windows on either side of the, the optimum. Okay. So the distance is basically like they just go, and whoever has the fastest time, as long as their horse meets the pulse down rate, they win. For you guys, it's more of a little bit more strategic, I guess you could say? Yes. Yeah, and I guess I should also mention that we can get points. We can get points taken off. You know, like they start off with a certain amount of points, and you can you get points deducted if you have problems. If your heart rate's too high, and you know if your if your horse is uh, misbehaving, you can get points taken off. Anytime that the, you're being looked at by the uh, ride judge or the vet, if your horse misbehaves in a pretty bad way, you're going to get points deducted. You get points deducted for, or you can get points deducted for your horse being like super, super tired looking, like, you know, worse than normal. And um, also if your horse is maybe just a a little off, meaning, you know, maybe they detect just a little, little tiny bit of a, um, something that the horse isn't traveling, you know, perfectly, you can get points taken off. And so... At, at the end of the day, with the with these competitive trail rides, is your placement ends up a point you have. The higher amount of point, the higher you place. Okay, okay. So this was the first annual Appaloosa competitive trail ride, correct? It sure was. And how many people did we have in this one? With the Appaloosa competitive trail ride competing, there were two. Okay, so you and Julie. I knew there was yes. three in the distance and. One got pulled. I wasn't too sure about with the trail ride ones. And then how that turned out for you guys? Oh, it was great. Um, I I knew Julie from a long, long, long time ago. I've met her. I've met her somewhere in this little competitive world. And um, we were paired to go out together. So our times started the same and ended the same as far as optimum. And uh, we just we just made an agreement right off the bat to go out together and and attempt to come in together. And we were just going to stick together. She had to stop for something. I would stop with her. And if she had to stop, I would stop with her. Okay. Okay. I didn't say that right. I got you. I got you. You know, so we would, we would just, uh, we would do our best to stick together throughout the ride so that we were, you know, we just, we're helping each other out. Right. Right. I understand. I understand. Well, I mean, it's kind of cool that, was there any other riders out there? Were they doing anything else that day when you guys were riding? Yes. Yes. Uh, they were definitely, there were other competitors in the competitive trail ride. They were just competing. It was an open trail ride, open competitive trail ride. And um, to my knowledge, there were not other breed uh, other than Ar- Arabians and us. Um, but there could have been. There were 10 total competitive trail riders on that day. Okay. Uh, and then there were all, there was also a, a 50 mile ride going on. Okay. So did you guys, you guys started with the other competitive trail riders or well, I know you guys don't all start at the same time, but they kind of break you up, but you just kind of fell in with the regular, the other competitive trail riders, just Appaloosa just happened to be doing their thing at the same time. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, they sent us out in three-minute increments in pairs. Okay. So there were five groups, too. So do you guys know how you did in comparison to the whole group? Yes. I, uh, well, (laughs) yes. I placed fourth and Julie placed ninth in the open. Okay, even though you guys pretty much came in together, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, because this one's not really, I mean, it is one of the criteria is your time. But also then you have all those other criteria I mentioned earlier. It could be either heart rates or soundness or behavior. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. For us, when we first started out, um, we, we were just assuming that we were only in the Appaloosa competitive trail ride. And we started discussing it between ourselves. And um, Julie said that maybe we were also actually competing concurrently in the open 
Right. And it wasn't until we were about halfway through it that we, you know, we had come back in for the uh, 45 minute mandatory hold. I asked somebody or two people, they both said, yes, that we were, we were riding concurrently also for the, or in the uh, open okay. competitive trail ride, which made it, yeah, so it made it a little different because it was, you know, you know, maybe we would have, you know, tried a little differently, but we were, it was, we just, at that point, we just thought it was us. So, yeah, but two of us. still six and ninth isn't nothing to sneeze at, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Oh, well, well, so fourth and ninth. Or, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of changes the game a little bit that you could come in first time wise, but maybe not get first because of something else that happened. You know, your horse didn't vet check the greatest, or maybe there was a little bit of lameness issue, or maybe they picked up a stone or something like that, you know, and, and, the judge or the vet saw that. And so now it's kind of taken some points away from you. So yeah, that, that kind of changes the game on that one, huh? It does. And you can, and I, I, I have had this happen many times. You can come in sound and you're doing the trot out. You have to, you have to trot out and trot back and you have to do a circle and actually trot out, do a circle and come back. And you, you can be doing the trot out and your horse step in a little funny hole in a, in a weird spot and then all of a sudden they're and they're trotting fine out and all of a sudden they're limping coming back just kind of stung themselves a little bit yeah yeah yep yep but that harms you because you're being it'd be different if it's happening on the trail and nobody saw it but you're doing that in front of your vet your judges you know so it harms you right right all right well that's i think that's all i had um is there anything that you wanted to cover or think anything that i missed maybe um I would I would just like to encourage uh, people who have Appaloosas and are looking for ways to earn awards on their horses or do something that you know it becomes a lifetime um, a, a lifetime achievement that you know goes on their their permanent record. There are you know tons of competitive trail rides and endurance races that go on across the country. In fact, they go, go they go on across the world, but. Um, you know, the, the Appaloosa Horse Club offers medallions for year-end achievements of, you know, 350 miles in a ride year. And, uh, and, of course, you have to look up the rules, make sure you're doing, you're following the rules according to, you know, what you're supposed to do. But, I mean, it's a terrific way to, to get something on your horse. You don't, you don't have to show your horse to get awards. And I, I think this is a great way to do it. Well, and then from the sounds of it, it sounds like you had some pretty good uh, camaraderie. Also, you like you said, you rode the ride pretty much right right there beside Julie the whole way. So um, that's the only thing yeah. I thought about distance. I'm like, that's a kind of a pretty lonely sport, you know. It's just you and your horse, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of what I've enjoyed about you know just regular trail rides is having people around you and talking and all that and kind of sharing that camaraderie, you know, being out in nature with your horse and all that kind of stuff and. Oh yeah, you know, the distance one kind of seems a little uh, lonely, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny though, because I talked to uh, I talked to Carrie about doing the competitive trail ride, and she's like, "Yeah, Cody doesn't like to go that slow." <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Deco doesn't normally either. So. I, um, I, there were, there were definitely plenty of times where I was way ahead of Julie and her horse, right? And I would, you know, I'd turn around like, are you okay? And she's, I'm doing great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I would, I would pull back my horse just a little bit and she would, you know, urge her horse on a little bit. So we kind of meet back, you know, get back together again. And, uh, you know, it, it worked out, it worked out well. There, there were definitely, definitely times where, you start out with somebody and you think, you think that you're going to be with that person. And for whatever reason, you know, your horse gets fast or like in our case, uh, you know, or somebody else's horse gets slow and you end up separating. But then you, you uh, usually tend to hook up with other riders who are in the same position. You know, your, your, your horses kind of match themselves. Right, right. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you really, really, really want to ride with that particular person, then you're go- you'll 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 just do what you need to do to keep doing that. But 
you know, if your horse is really just wanting to go and, you know, maybe that's the best thing for the horse at that time because of the, um, the, the less you fight your horse, the less energy they spend actually. Right. Um, then, you know, maybe, you know, the horse is more suited to ride with a, you know, a different horse at that time. I mean, my goodness, you have 40 miles. You're, the, the, the horse that has a lot of energy might, you know, can certainly slow down and you end up riding with that person later that you wanted to ride with in the first place. Right, right. All right, well, ma'am, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. And as always, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for um, taking time to speak with me, too. I appreciate it. All right, well, you guys have a good evening. Thank you, and you as well. Hey, Julie, how you doing? Good, Tony. All right, well, let's start off since you, this is the first time you've been on the show. So let's go ahead and start with how did you, or when did you first get involved with horses? And then when did you get involved with Appaloosas? Okay. Well, I've been involved with horses since I was about 14 and actually have a degree in animal science and worked the horse industry in Kentucky for about 15 years. Um, I've always had horses and, um, with the Appaloosas, I, that was my first horse ever. And so when I was able to buy another horse in my late 30s, it was another Appaloosa. And have been doing distance riding since I was about 49, so 11 years, I guess. And it's always been on an Appaloosa. Okay. So that's kind of unique. Right, yeah. Now, you were down in Veneta this last weekend for the championship trail ride. Well, you were actually there for answer and the championship trail ride, which I just learned that out when I was talking to Kim. I didn't realize that you had done both. Yep. I thought that you had <laughs> just done the answer. Correct. Um, no, I had. How did I come about that? Well, I've known Jeff Hartman, who owns the horse um, that I was on. I actually rode that horse last year for him in uh, Indiana at answer and I just love that horse and um I knew that he would be riding uh his horse Gazi again and so I knew that horse could potentially be available and so I offered again to ride it in July and he was so kind enough to say yes again so it's thrilled and my Appaloosa that I hauled from Colorado was, was so much better fit for the um competitive trail ride uh, just because he was hairy as a willy worm and he wouldn't be able to move out that fast and he would have overheated. And so I said, well, the CTR would be perfect fit for him. So I got to ride both. Okay. Well, that's something new. I didn't know that. So you rode two different horses then. Correct. Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't, didn't realize that. Learn something new every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So how did those rides turn out for you? Um, well, Bosque and my pizzazz on the, on Friday, uh, we saddled up in the rain. It was about 45 degrees, pouring rain, and um, we headed out with the lead group, and I know Jeff always likes to move out fast, and so we did. We headed down the, it was all moved to roads, pretty much which was kind of not your typical endurance ride whatsoever. So on the first loop, we were blazing, and we were um, leading one and two. Uh, we unfortunately missed the turn and headed up the road an extra mile. Figured that out, came back, and um, kept, I think that put us in about fourth and fifth, and we came into the first hold, um, pulled down very quickly. Um, that horse down, my horse was down. We were doing great. Took off on the second loop, um, made a time. In fact, we were just behind the leader, um, me by about 45 seconds. Jeff, unfortunately, picked up um, a sign from his horse. He had a, a stone in his easy boot. So we stopped, we pulled that out, and we're hoping that was the problem. When we pulled into the Second vet check, and Jeff unfortunately got pulled um, for right front lameness. And so I was on my own with his, um, his ass, and we had eight more miles to go. And I figured if I hustled, I could maybe catch Carrie, but she was moving also. And um, I finished up 11 minutes behind her. And I had a super ride. The horse was 
awesome. Um, super athlete. And I wish Gazi could have been there with us with Jeff. But um, I was very pleased and, and happy with this horse. It was a blast. Yeah, I'm quite aware of the weather that you guys were having because I'm only like 40, 45 miles away from Vanita. Oh, my God. It poured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was telling Carrie and Kim, I was trying to come up there on Friday night. Well, I, yeah, I was going to try to come up there Friday night, uh, try to catch the, the competitive trail ride people coming in and the endurance people going out, you know, doing their award ceremony and all that. But right. Our barn had gotten flooded. So mm-hmm. I was Friday spending pretty much most of the day redoing the, uh, the aisle and a couple of the stalls. And then Saturday, I guess because from being out in that rain and that cold all day, you know, sweating, mm-hmm. I felt I felt like crap the next day. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try to make it, but I don't know. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Well, but I didn't end up. If you would have been there, all the rigs, not even a tractor could pull the trailers out. Uh, Gunner Frank had a bulldozer that we were pulling rigs out of the out of his field with. <laughs> that's how bad it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what Carrie was telling me. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that's kind of bad. Oh my god. <laughs> so, well, the bad thing was, is even after you guys left, you know, Friday and Saturday it rained pretty much stopped raining Saturday and Sunday. Well, like Monday and Tuesday or Tuesday and Wednesday it rained more. Oh, you're so kidding. So we ended up getting a total. No, we ended up getting like a total of like four inches five inches or something within like four or five days so yeah it's sloppy many must now it's actually today was not too bad that we've had it's been dry for the last few days we had a little bit of wind today so it's kind of helping dry everything out right right but yeah i was i was there with y'all in spirit that's for sure oh wow yeah oh we rode saturday and actually saturday during the ctr it cleared off about 12:30, and we had some blue skies, and it was helping to dry up really quickly. But um, God bless the Franks that just tore their big hayfield up. And um, boy, if that would have been my hayfield, <laughs> it would have been going oh no. But they seemed to handle it pretty well, and and they did a terrific job hosting that event. Well, now they hosted this three years ago too, right? Uh, they hosted it two or three years ago. Yes. Yeah, they did. Um, and, um, yeah, and they had great weather, actually. It was a little warm. It was almost nothing. So, you, yeah, I remember that year. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that was the year I found out they had it there, but it was too late. And I was like, oh, man, I missed it. So, right. But, you know, so you ended up second for answer. But then you also ended up second for half Arab and second overall. Is that correct? Correct. Both the F Luces finished one two. So that was that was super amazing and, and just tells you a little bit about what the Appaloosa horse can do. Yeah, I think that's great great testimony for the Appaloosas, especially competing in a sport that is pretty much dominated by Arabs you, for the most part. You, you know, got of course, it. I heard this year that it was the Arab didn't even come until fourth. So I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're slipping a little bit. <laughs> oh, there was a yeah, there was a Shaga uh, uh, Arabian that came in third, and I don't know if it was a half Arabian or or a full Arabian that finished fourth. But um, there was a Shaga from uh, Washington that came in third. Okay, so you you rode whose horse was it you rode? Uh, it was a, a gentleman named Jeff Hartman, and he raises and breeds Appaloosas in Pennsylvania. And I've known him, oh, since 2009. I've been competing against him, and he always does super well with uh, the horses that he brings to answer. And he's just a great rider, too, and a great horseman. Well, I guess we probably ought to give him a little bit of a shout-out since oh, you're riding his horse, right? No <laughs> kidding. No kidding. It, it, in fact, when I, they handed me the trophy, I, I had it in my hands for about 15 seconds and walked straight over to him and handed it to him. <laughs> so, anyway, right. yeah, I felt really bad that he had been pulled. He hasn't um, been pulled at an answer forever. Or ever, I think. He's had several reasons why he couldn't finish. Um, in fact, one year he gave in, in Alabama medical assistance to a gentleman that had a heart attack on the trail and gave his entire ride oh, wow. up for, 
yeah, gave his entire ride up to, to help that man. So um, Jeff's a really good person. Yeah, I was talking to Lucy Hess about, you know, what they do. You know, I've never been to an endurance race. I've always done like just regular trail rides and they usually have like four wheelers or whatever running up and down the trail, kind of checking on people and stuff like that. And I was asking her, I was like, do they do that for the endurance races? And she goes, no, we pretty much, we wait for them to come to back to us. You know, if, if a horse comes in without a rider, then we might go out on the trail, but we don't go out on the trail because we don't want to bother anybody. We don't want to spook a horse or anything like that. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause I was, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I can get on with a four wheeler and kind of ride around or whatever. And she's like, nah, nah, we, we don't, we don't do that. Right. I was like, ah, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Right, well. And that weekend you wouldn't have been able to, <laughs> your four wheeler would have gotten stuck. Right. <laughs> so no, generally they'll, they'll go out and look for us. Like if someone hasn't come in and we know, you know, it's over time. Um, cause we, the fifties take, we're given 12 hours to complete them. If somebody isn't in and it's starting to get dark, everybody, a lot of people will go out and look for them. And um, it happens. So what did you do your time in this time? Oh, the time of the ride? Um, yes. Yeah. Five hours and 11 minutes, which is actually the fastest endurance ride of 50 I've ever ridden. <laughs> Just just horses can move, and it was on the road, and it was flat, and so um, the surface was was good and safe to move on. In fact, one point, Jeff Perry said GPS, we were moving at twenty seven miles an hour, and I mean, oh, wow. no, a lot of horses can't do that, and but Jeff's horses were super fit, and and. And, and I knew, that, you know, I wasn't pushing this horse hard to do that. I wasn't holding them at 27 miles an hour. Um, just at one point, we hit that speed, and it was ideal conditions. And, and um, the horses are checked by the vets every um, loop, which a loop here was 20.5 miles. And after we did that loop that we had that speed on, this horse pulls down um, to below criteria in less than two minutes. So he, he was fine. Wow. Yeah, he was fine. He was great. Okay, so moving over to Saturday on the competitive trail, you and Kim Rumspa got teamed up together or got you started at the same time, I guess. And right. You guys kind of stuck together for most of the ride, I guess. Yeah, because it's, it's not a, a competitive trail. It isn't a quote-unquote race. It's a, an event that you have to move on and finish at a certain criteria time. So on this ride, we were given eight hours to complete 40 miles. And so if you come in um, 15 minutes um, before or after minimum, minimum time, which was eight hours, you're penalized and actually don't even get a finish. So you have to just watch your pace. And so her and I were had horses that could pace at the same, you know, speed and she was a blast to ride with. So we just chatted up the whole time. I got to know her and, um, and rode together the whole time. Actually, it was fun. Yeah. I was, I was talking to Kim earlier and I was like, yeah, that seems like it'd be a little bit more, um, social <laughs> than the distance. The distance kind of seems like it might be a little lonely because you're basically just trying to get the best time. Whereas this one, you're kind of paired up a little bit and then you know you're you got a minimum time and a maximum time so it's like well if we're moving out pretty good the first loop then we can kind of settle back the next loop and you know make sure that we're hitting our time and all that kind of stuff yeah. so and that's actually what we did <laughs> i was like that seems a little bit more like the trail rides i've been on you know maybe not right as fast of a pace, but <laughs> right. Actually, yeah, I was like, I was, I'm like, that is going to be one long day in the saddle for me because I just, I like to be done <laughs> in, oh, I could ride 40 miles on the flat in probably about five hours just trotting along. And so, yeah, that was a long day in the saddle for me. Yeah, I was joking with Kim. I was talking to Carrie um, actually before the ride and I was like, are you doing both or are you just doing answers? She's like, oh, no, I just do answers. She's like, my horse doesn't go, like to go slow enough for the competitive trail. Right. And I was kind of 
poking at Kim a little bit about that, and she was laughing. She's like, well, my horse is that way sometimes, too, so, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, Kim would have done okay on the endurance ride. Yeah, exactly. But, um, oh, I just want to mention, too, I got to know Carrie Lowry. She she travels in a pickup truck and a little stock trailer, a bumper pole. And I pulled in Friday or Thursday, and I saw her. I know her just from rides. And I said, Carrie, where are you staying? And she says, well, I'm going to stay in my truck. And I'm like, oh, no, you're not. You're coming over to my trailer. And she, <laughs> she actually spent the weekend with me in my living quarters trailer, and, and we bunked up together, and, and she's a blast to be around. So we're all really good friends, even though we compete against each other. We 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 all treat each other pretty well. And, and, and you know, but it's time in the saddle, and it's time to race. It's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I've talked I've talked to Carrie a couple times now. She's been on the show a couple times and I've seen pictures of her rig, you know, which is basically like you said a pickup truck and a a two-horse slant. And uh I'm like, "Man, I hope you're bringing your cold weather gear cuz it's going to be cold here this weekend, you know, coming this right. before the ride." And she's like, "Oh, I just stay in my truck." I'm like, "Really?" I know. And she's like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> She's like, I know Lucy will have a mobile home there and some of the other people have bigger rigs, you know, with sleeping quarters and stuff like that. She's like, but I, just, I usually just stay in my truck, which I guess she's from Louisiana. So if she stays down in her area, it, it probably works out pretty good for, you know, because, you know, other than the summertime, I would guess it would get kind of hot. But <laughs> Right, right. And I'm just like, oh, no, girlfriend, it's going to be a 40 degree weekend. You're staying with me. So she did. Yeah. She brought her little dog over and, and all her stuff, and, and <laughs> we had fun. So how did the trail ride work out for you? Oh, the trail ride? Uh, Sprite did great. Um, I had to put boots, uh, easy care boots on them. I had pulled his shoes two weeks before thinking that the ride was going to be on grass. And, um, and we were. I was actually planning on doing it barefoot in the back and no shoes or uh, just the easy care gloves in the front, which he, I use them at home. And those kind of didn't work in our favor because the gravel got all piled in the back of them and I had glued them on the night before. And so he was actually a little, just, he didn't want his lower legs touched because he thought, they're going to touch my sore heels, don't touch my legs. And so he wouldn't let them actually look at his legs that great. And yeah, his heels were rubbed a little with some gravel, so it kind of against us. And pretty much, we were pretty even with Kim um, for metabolics and and soundness and everything. But um, she won the flip of the coin there, and and she won the the championship. And I got the red ribbon again, which was fine. Um, I was proud of Sprite; and did good for me. Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit with the the competitive trail ride. You know, you have points that can be taken away from you for soundness or, you know, hold, you know, if your horse doesn't want to, you know, behave properly and all that right. kind of stuff. So, cause I was asking, you know, there's overall, she got fourth and you got, what was it? Sixth or ninth or no, something like no. that. I got and ninth. That, yeah. And Sprite usually does a lot oh, better okay. than that. Yeah. And it was because pretty much he just didn't want his lower legs touched or fooled with. So, when the vets go to check their suspensory tendons, you know, they'll give them a, a good pinch and, and, and feel. And he's like, Oh no, you are not touching my legs. And it wasn't really because <laughs> I knew his suspensories were fine. That horse's legs are like, like iron. And I'm like, he was just being Mr. Sprite and, um, and not letting anybody really touch his legs at all. So he wasn't lame. In fact, uh, eight days before the ride, he had a pop to gravel here in Colorado, which is um, an equivalent of people terms. It's like, uh, uh, oh, what do I want to say like popping a good blister out of the uh, right. cornet band of his hoof. And he was like even three-legged lame eight days prior to this ride. And I'm like, I don't even know if we can go. And I poulticed him and stuck him here. And by the time he loaded in the trailer, he was just a touch off. So I was crossing my fingers that by the time we got to Oklahoma, he'd be sound. And, and he was. So, um, so that was a, a gift that I got to ride that ride. 
could not have happened for me, potentially. So Right, right. Anyway, yeah. And he's a foundation at Palooza also, so you don't see many of them around at all. And um, he's just a great representative of the breed. He's, he's a, a ham bone here at the farm, and he's fun to work with. Okay. So I didn't know that, that he was, he's not a half Arab. He's full blood he foundation. Full Appaloosa. blood foundation, 97% foundation, um, Brad Appaloosa. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of changes the game a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess that is part of the game though, is because I was saying, well, if you guys came in first and second, then, you know, how was the big separation and, you know, Kim was explaining, you know, the point system and all that, but I guess that that's kind of how it works with the competitive trail is it might, you might not actually be the first person across the line, but still might actually win, or you might be the first person across the line and maybe not win because the way the points play oh, out yeah. you know, with your soundness. Exactly. and Exactly. It's not even close to an endurance ride. Yeah. There are two different animals for sure. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, I think that's about all I had. Is there anything that I might have missed or something that you want to talk about that we didn't cover by any um, chance? No, not really. I appreciate the um, the opportunity to promote the Appaloosa breed, and I think they're kind of overlooked for endurance horses, and we proved that this last couple or last weekend in Vanita, and I just think they're a great breed to have around, and they can be kind of opinionated sometimes, but <laughs> um, I, I enjoy them. So I, I'm probably pretty opinionated too, but anyway, um, no, thank you for, um, giving me this opportunity. Not a problem. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. You guys have a good evening. Uh huh. So what's next for you guys? Um, oh goodness. Um, I I enjoy the competitive and the endurance riding, and I don't have any specific plans right now. I'm I'm kind of making plans for riding on the Chief Joseph Trail ride. Uh, I have uh, some cousins who are wanting to go, and I have a friend from Ireland who wants to go, and uh, so I'm trying to uh, start to figure out logistics with horses and you know, camping and all that jazz. And I, and I plan to take Deco on that. She's been on it a couple of times too, but, but that's more like the trail ride. Like you're talking about. Right. <laughs> you went this, this year, didn't you? I did. Yes. That, that was one of the more challenging ones this year, wasn't it? Um, it was, it was challenging. It was. Yes. Uh, the, the road, it wasn't just for the riders; it was for the um, the drivers too, yeah. because the the <laughs> I guess you heard. I saw, I saw <laughs> some of the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there were some pretty pretty gnarly switchbacks. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was, you know I, I'm not sure that the roads were really designed to handle the you know, the, the length of uh, trailers that were on these roads, so. Yeah, they were like sheer, just sheer drop offs on the the sides. Oh, it was, I mean, it was beautiful and amazing, and I'm sure really, really scary right. for some people, you know. Yeah, I thought but, about, I saw they were looking for drivers to move rigs and all that, and I've thought about volunteering for that to just go up there and, you know, not participate in the ride, but just to go up there and help people move trucks and trailers from one spot to the other yeah because i used to drive i drove over the road for many 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 years and you know i've spent time <laughs> in west virginia and colorado and stuff like that hauling lumber and stuff like that so i was like eh, i just didn't know if i could get the time off from work to do that and, and tell them you, you won't be able to contact me for a week because i won't be out in the boonies You're right <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i think that it I would strongly urge you to to join us if, in fact, you think you might be able to, because I it, I think it's really um, I think it's a side of the Appaloosa world that um, you know not a lot of I mean plenty of people do experience it, but there are a lot of people who haven't experienced it, and I think it's 
it's really valuable. I mean, we're, we're, you know, the, the Nez Perce developed the Appaloosa and we, we're not only riding on or near the areas where the Nez Perce nation and, you know, the tribes were, but where they traveled and, and the, I mean, there were like, there was a, an actual real trail. It was an Indian trail that we took, you know, on one day and it, oh my gosh, it, it can't even begin to explain it. There's just no way. The pictures don't do it justice. And, um, it, and besides just riding through there, Nez Perce are represented by two different tribes on the ride. And it is um, just amazing to be able to ride with them and, you know, hear the history from them. And they uh, definitely are very open to sharing whatever, answering any questions you have. And, they, you know, they'll help, they'll teach you some of the language. And it's just really wonderful. I didn't know they did that. So they have people from the Nez Pierce tribe there kind of explaining the history and all that. Is is it is it when you guys stop in the evenings or is it as you're going along? Uh both. Both. Um they do have people who come in and uh explain some of the history for the area. So they have historians who come by and they also have um depending on what's the program for the evening, you know, they, they try to prearrange a lot of this. Uh, sometimes they have some of the Nez Perce stand up and speak. They have, um, sometimes they have uh, little ceremonies. I say little, I shouldn't say that at all. They have, <laughs> they perform ceremonies while we're there. Uh, they, they say prayers before dinner. You know, we have, so there's a lot of interaction with the Nez Perce. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, you know, it, I'm, I don't even know where to, how to, how to say it, but I feel very, very connected to the Nez Perce and, you know, and then having all these Appaloosas out there. It's just, um, it's an incredible experience. I, you just can't, you can't get without being there. All right. Well, that's cool. Yeah, like I said, I didn't know they did that. Um, that's that kind of adds a little bit of dimension to the the whole aspect. Is if they got people out there doing the historical part of it, that's pretty cool. I know there were some pictures where you were talking about you guys were actually going down an Indian trail, and somebody was talking about how they used to bend the trees to mark the trail and that kind of stuff. And so that was kind of cool. Um, I never never really read that or seen that before, but that's kind of cool to learn that. But it All is. right, well, ma'am, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on, and as always, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Um, Thank you. Hopefully we'll get a chance to do it down the road someplace, too. Well, I would totally look forward to it. Thank you for um, taking time to speak with me, too. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you, ma'am. You guys have a good evening. Thank you, and you as well. Bye-bye. Bye. If you like what you heard, please go subscribe. We are pretty much any place that you can get music online. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Radio FM, any of those places you go to, Google Podcasts, you can subscribe to the show. If you do that, you'll make sure that you'll never miss an episode. Don't rely on social media to let you know when there's an episode. We all know what they're doing with the algorithms with social media. And then go tell a friend about the show. If you like what you heard and you think it's a good thing, go tell a friend. Share the show with a friend. Better yet, show a friend how to subscribe to the show. Until next time, happy trails.